Yeah, if anyone want to speak, they should raise the hand. Yeah. I okay, think Sustan Adam Sard has raised their hand. Yeah, yeah. Sustan, uh, you unmute yourself. Yes, yeah. Okay. What is calling you, Venkat from uh, Boston? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sustan, sir. Namaste. Long time. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes Venkat. I, I send, uh, I'm glad, you know, uh, today yeah. I have an opportunity. Because, you know, these days, you know, one is completely lost in one's uh, confinement yeah, and one is sort of looking, you know, oneself, yeah. uh, not much of a thing. I mean, once in a while, you know, these kinds of uh, uh, Zoom meetings are keeping one active. So, otherwise, I'm most of the time confined yeah, to the yeah. four walls of my flat. <laughs> What to do? No, no, you guys are doing wonderful yes. work. I mean, uh, you know, you retired almost, uh, it's 10 years, sir, now you retired? Yes. About 10 years. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you look uh, still yes. energetic, and uh, so you guys keep. Uh, yeah. You know, yes. Yeah. So that's yes, a, Venkat, yeah. It's a good thing yeah. about writers. You can write until. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, still, you know, we still, yeah, that is true, uh, Venkat, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what uh, we have been, you know, yeah. uh, some of us, you know, like Alea, myself, we are, you know, of the same generation, you know, grew up in a kind of an academic milieu. Uh, in the Usman University and later um, and so on. So anyway, we hope, yeah. you know, these kinds of uh, exercises would certainly keep our younger generation connected yeah. with certain things. Yes, yeah. yes. I know you have been, uh, you know, quite energetic, you know, in taking such initiatives. <laughs> you know, what energies, I, are I our energies are all going in our... Uh, you know, I know, running yes. around yeah, our yeah. careers, and you know that's how we are spending most of our time. Yeah. So we, we could do more. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's true. yeah. Um, you do you know, I I vividly remember you know my trip <laughs> to your place, you know, and then you know the kind of time I spent. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So <sighs> I think uh, respecting everybody's time, um, let's get started. Um, I think for those who just joined, my name is Venkat Moroju and I'm part of the Boston study group here. Um, I have uh, my colleagues with me, uh, Heman Chavan, uh, the president of Boston study group and uh, Sanjay Bhagat was ex-president and, um, and uh, Pradeep and uh, Swaroop, um, Amrapali and other people, uh, part of the Boston study group here, they'll be facilitating. So, uh, just to uh, get started, uh, Boston Study Group is a, an Ambedkarite organization uh, primarily focused in New England area. And uh, we have been there uh, about five years uh, and um, ago we, we basically uh, incorporated and we've been uh, actively, you know, uh, trying to bring Ambedkar's vision and um, his ideals uh, trying to universalize and uh, luckily we have very good, um, uh, you know, here being in Boston, a lot of good universities and we work with them uh, and host a lot of lectures, conferences, um, as well as we also do, uh, you know, uh, this lecture series actually we do, uh, we used to do monthly at a physical location, either at MIT, Harvard or UMass, but now we moved on to Zoom. I've uh, been doing this like this is like 47th or 48th in the last uh, uh, three years, I think a little more than three years. Uh, and then we also um, collaborate with Brandeis University, UMass and other to do this uh, yearly conference on Ambedkar, Unfinished Legacy of Ambedkar. It's a three day academic conference that ha happens, you know, uh, probably not even in India. Where, and uh, we are fortunate to be part of these efforts here. And uh, so uh, coming to today's topic, um, uh, it's uh, basically uh, the Shudras, who are the Shudras and what is the relevance in Kamba in uh, stopping this uh, Hindutva Jagarna. And, uh, you know, Professor Kancha Ilaya, uh, probably he doesn't need introduction um, in especially, you know, uh, most of uh, uh, Indian is one of the leading uh, intellectual writer, scholar, and philosopher. Um, and uh, I personally uh, go back with uh, Professor Ailaya uh, even much before I met him. 
um, you know, I first read uh, his book, uh, uh, Why I Am Not a Hindu. Uh, this is, uh, if you want to put in a time frame, uh, 96, right, sir, so around 96, 97, I, I, my brother sent me a book, but that time, you know, internet was that, this, my brother sent a book, uh, you know, from India, then I read, and it, it actually profoundly impacted uh, the way I started uh, perceiving, you know, my surroundings, my society, and where I'm grown up, because i grew grown up in, you know, hinterlands of Telangana, where uh, in 70s and 80s, if anybody you know, could imagine it's a very vibrant uh, uh, Naxalite movement. You know, we, we used to you know have maths classes in my 12th grade and next door we used to sing Lal Salam songs. That's a kind of uh, environment we grew up. And there was hardly any uh, introduction or thoughts and discussions about caste or Ambedkar, Pule, you know, none of that existed. So it was a pretty... Um, a pioneering and uh, uh, you know breathtaking what you call pathbreaking book uh, that influenced like me and so many other people and of course uh, uh, after uh, you know Professor Ailaya has written so many books uh, challenging the status quo and Hindutva as well as uh, uh, you know Dalit and uh, caste right so as a professionally uh, for those who doesn't know he was a uh, he came from a very humble beginning. He was uh, he didn't go to school until seven eight years. He was actually uh, you know raiding the cattle until seven or eight years. Uh, then he went very really late into the school. Then he you know uh, academically never looked back, and he went to Usmania University, got his PhD, and then he also got a, a professorship at uh, I mean he got faculty at Usmania University, and he retired about you know ten years back. I think a little more than ten years back. Then he was a uh, director of um, the Center for Social Exclusion Inclusion at uh, um, Maulana Manu, Maulana Abul Kalam, right, sir? Uh, University Manu, which is in Hyderabad. And um, so, uh, with that introduction, what I would suggest is um, uh, Professor Ayla Yasi. Uh, I think the, the main thing I think I want to set the context is uh, I don't know how many of you know, but uh, there was a, a recently uh, Professor Ailaya uh, and um, you know they edited one book, The Shudras and the New you know uh, a Path for New Vision, and that book uh, has actually stirred a lot of intellectual debate uh, in a new way of you know bringing this Shudra identity and Shudra. You know, is a, a historical uh, category uh, that has not been, you know, found that much attention in uh, intellectual circles and as well as academic circles. I think uh, in the in the context of race in Hindutva, the way kind of a, um, you know religious fanatism we are seeing that is, you know, really really uh, taking a toll on our country. Uh, this discussion is is very pertinent, and how do we see through this lens? Uh, of, uh, you know, Varna system and where the Shudras really their place is, okay? Uh, it's because it's a big mass in, in a democratic setup. Uh, these guys should be actually uh, making decisions. They are the ones should be really ruling the country, but uh, in reality, that is not happening. So this whole uh, discussion uh, around the Shudras and who they are, you know, what is their role and, you know, what happened historically and what is the contemporary situation. I think these are very, very, very pertinent discussions. And um, I want to thank, actually, there were a number of authors uh, contributed to this book. Uh, uh, Arvind Kumar, Reverend Sunil Sardar, Sharad Yadav, Om Prakash Mahato, Prachi Patil, Urmilesh, Ram Shepard, Binavani, Bindu, and uh, Dodahati and Pallikonda Manikanta, Dr. P. Vinay Kumar. So I would highly encourage all of you, this book is available in Kindle, um, in Amazon, so you could uh, download and read it. I think it's it's a uh, very, very stimulating uh, uh, book. So with that, I um, want to hand it over to Professor Ailaya. I think uh, most of these authors are also um, attending here. Now, I don't know all of them. Uh, I can't uh, recognize here, but uh, uh, Professor Ailaya, sir, can um, introduce them as well as give some opening remarks. And I think uh, the best way to use is let's do a lively discussion, you know, um, question and answer or, you know, comments. I think that's how we'll take it forward. So Professor Ailaya, um, 
Yeah, thank you, Venkat, for this uh, very important session from Boston and uh, bringing a lot of intellectuals from U.S. and a lot of people from India are also joining, apart from who know you are Boston Studies Circle, and our own uh, circles are also joining this. Now, this is the book that we are going to talk about. Uh, it is the first uh, top title you can see, Rethinking India series. Yeah. Uh, this uh, uh, Rethinking India series are 14 volumes. This is the fifth volume. And the sixth volume also has come out within one year, all by Penjun, the Shudra's vision for a new path. Now, there is an organization called Samrut Bharat Foundation in Delhi, which is a very significant organization that has planned these volumes uh, and involved almost 14 to 1500 intellectuals to bring out these volumes. And uh, the Shudras is uh, the best seller from the day one. And even now it is continue to, continues to be best seller. And I'm happy to tell you that uh, the Samrut Bharat Gen Secretary, uh, Mr. Pushparaj, who is uh, in Delhi, uh, he will uh, uh, introduce what Samrud Bharat is, why they launched this whole project of rethinking India. Why rethink India through uh, research and uh, scholarship uh, and at, at a time when the right-wing forces have completely removed even epoch-making thinkers like Gautam Buddha, Ambedkar, Gandhi, and Nehru from the structures of teaching in India. Now, this is the context in which uh, the, the whole project has come in. Uh, I request um, Pushparaj, he can't uh, come on a video. Unfortunately, he is also uh, suffering from uh, mild COVID, uh, he will uh, say a few words about Samrut Bharat. Pushparaj, to you. You Hello. can unmute uh, Pushparaj. Yeah. yeah. Am I audible now? Yes, you are all audible. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Uh, thank you for uh, having me here on the Boston Study Group. Uh, Professor Kancha, Karthik, Sunilji, and the other authors, it's a pleasure to see you again. Um, Professor Kancha, of course, I mean, he will talk a lot about uh, the Shudras in general, but very quickly to talk about why Samrata Bharat uh, decided to undertake this Rethinking India series is that, you know, uh, over the past few years, uh, we've seen that India has sort of undergone an unprecedented democratic regression. Uh, whether we like it or not, the BJP and the RSS have successfully initiated and implemented a Gleichschal doom like policy. And they've seized control of all political, social, economic institutions. And in this sense, they're further using, misusing all of these institutions to further one ideology, one leader, one culture. Now, elections are one way before they start. We, whether we acknowledge this fully and Professor Kancha is one of those few intellectuals in India who is not just seized of this imperative but is actively trying to create an alternative paradigm is that we are in the midst of cultural war. We have been in the middle of a cultural war for the last 20-30 years aggressively and uh, the RSS has certainly been waging this war for the past you know I mean, since 1925 which is when they were established. And the idea behind them is that the normative basis of the state, of the Indian state, the cultural project that the Indian state undertook, which is the constitution, the constitutional values, each of these, each of these values that are emanating from this project 
is something that the RSS and the BJP have undermined actively and uh, indirectly. Now, today we have seen the most visible manifestation of that process. They have systematic, systematically reshaped public discourse and influenced individual consciousness. Now, the problem is that after Baba Sahib Ambedkar, Nehru, Gandhi, perhaps even Indira Gandhi, you can, you can include in this, there has been not much concerted effort from the so-called secular, left of center, liberal political parties to shape individual consciousness, to shape the hearts and minds of people. You know, the, you know one is that there is no normative framework normative ideological framework to shape what should be uh, done to further India's constitutional promise. On the other hand, there has been a lack of political rhetoric. There's been a lack of political, social symbols, cultural symbols. We haven't been able to use popular culture, films, songs, art, literature, you know, folklore, other kinds of things, as well as the media. And in this, I don't just include uh, electronic print or digital, but even social media. Now, what's happened today is that there is this complete delegitimization of the of the indian state's political project and uh, now there is a concerted vilification and caricaturing of uh, everything that the rss have stood against you know ideological religious minorities the political parties the states so on and so forth now samrata bharat foundation was established precisely to uh, further India's constitutional values through various projects. And we work in a federated manner. So we have a large number of uh, projects which are basically trying to uh, influence the hearts and minds of people through some of the things that I talked about right now. You know, po popular culture, um, political parties, policy, so on and so forth. But one of the things that we realized over the past two, two and a half years that we've been uh, existing is that, uh, you know, uh, the RSS and the BJP have very clear-cut defined political projects. The, the so-called, the secular parties, the, the secular, the secular progressive fronts that are, ex that exist outside the political framework can't talk about what are the five political projects. I mean, just to say five. Now, if you look at the RSS, if you ask them what their five projects are, you can easily say othering minorities, you know, under which comes uniform civil code, mob lynchings, you know, CNRC, so on and so forth, love jihad laws. The second thing is they're asserting their Hindu supremacy, which is why Ayodhya, Mathura, Kashi, you know, um, imposition of Hindi, Akhand Bharat, anti scout slaughter laws, so on and so forth. They want to undermine the social justice paradigm by reasserting. Manuvad. So there is, there, they undermine caste-based reservations as well as uh, legal safeguards for Dalits, Adivasis and Bahujans in general. They want to appropriate gods and icons of OBC and Dalit subcasts. They have Shuddhikaran programs, so on and so forth. And of course, there are many other things, you know, undermining elite politics in general, you know, one nation, one poll, you know, uh, we are against dynastic politics, against corruption, so on and so forth. The point we realized is that Progressive forces don't have clear-cut political projects. And that was the genesis of the Rethinking India series. The idea being that there are a number of uh, paradigms that have that have that have grown from India's uh, original constitutional uh, the political project, which which was initially in the constitution, but it has in some sense come to a standstill today partly because political parties have not been able to implement them effectively and partly because there is, in general, a concerted effort to undermine, sabotage this project by the RSS primarily. So, to, to, to basically um, tackle this, this fundamental vacuum that we have now, we b basically started the Rethinking India series, which now, as Professor Kancha said, is in the, the six books have, have, have just come out, the Shudra, and it's doing fantastically well, to basically give us a sense of, uh, to, 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 to rethink current socio-economic political paradigms, so that we are not just able to, uh, to make, a, to draw a line in the sand as to what 
and who we are but able to engage with the people not instrumentally but culturally socially socially and then maybe start reviving their hearts and regaining and you know regaining their trust and winning their hearts and minds now uh the rethinking india series we've had six books so far just to briefly uh, mention them the first one was uh, vision for a nation by akash rathore and ashish nandi then we have the minority conundrum living in majority majoritarian times that was edited by professor tanveer fazal then we have rethinking uh, reviving jobs by professor santosh merotra uh, we've had uh, we the people by aruna roy nikhil ray and rakshita and uh, i'm forgetting one more uh, but yeah broadly these are the uh, books that we have now the next lot is going to be following the shudra this is going to be on uh, dalit lives matter followed by adivasis um, and women uh, we've just released women actually i just forgot that so this is broadly the uh, why we started re- the rethinking india series and broadly what sbf is engaged in uh thank you uh and back to you venkat ji yeah thank you uh dear deshpande i think uh, you know one small um, uh, correction apologies actually the book is edited by professor kanchaile shepard and also kartik raja karupa swami i missed the name uh, apologies kartik <laughs> so uh, i think uh, there are two editors and kartik is also uh, with us here so i just uh, so with that uh, um, professor ayla yeah, back to you yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you venkat and uh, i'm glad uh, for our could uh, introduce a whole project <clears throat> yeah uh, and uh, six books the book that he forgot is uh, her uh, right to uh equality uh this was uh, edited by another women scholar so uh so the the question today is why did we think of shudras not obcs because even in samrudh bharat foundation when the book was being uh, published by penguin there was a lot of uh discussion about this <clears throat> and uh, i was of the opinion that uh, after bjp came to power in 2014 more particularly than in 2000 the 9 to 14 uh, there is a, a systematic plan to come to power by using shudra obc uh oat base by completely setting aside the muslim oats by constant attacking <laughs> and uh, even <laughs> neglecting the dalit <laughs> uh because if dalits uh, do not come into the fold of uh, uh, rss bjp combined uh they could even sideline them but if they in cash the whole shudra oats which constitutes two parts one is the reserved shudras uh in each state there is a reservation list and the list of uh, this reservation shudras also added with another reserved caste for example banias were added in many states of north india into the reservation category and also the muslims have also got into the reservation category so if we were to use the title obc then narendra modi who actually is a gujarati banya but has a proper obc certificate would have been part of uh, this project so uh, so we thought that and then the jars gujars patels marathas kamas reddies uh, nayas lingais waklingas uh, 
the Nayakas, Madhuryas, and so on, would not have come into this because they were not in the reservation OBC list as of now. Therefore, I thought that uh, we should re bring back the classical uh, pre-Aryan productive mass uh, force, for example, between writing of Rugveda and uh, establishment of the Arapan city, uh, there was huge amount of production, agricultural development, animal economy. By then, milk products were uh, developed and uh, irrigation systems were developed. And all this was before what we call the present Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or the Aryan, and uh, now uh, Kayasthas and Katris in North India branched out of the same group. Before they came in the third wave of migration, uh, it is these Shudra communities, uh, including the Adivasis now, the later converted, uh, con transformed into untouchable, what we call Dalits, all of them were Shudras, productive, labor-based, engaging with nature, but they were made slaves in the Forvarna order. And that slave Forvarna order continues till now. Now that you can see in religion, even the top Shudras like Reddis, Kamas, Marathas, so on, cannot read. Uh, in Sanskrit schools, cannot become priests, cannot lead the ritual philosophical schools. Even a reading of Panchangam, for example, cannot be done by them. So, uh, so then from 1947 to 2014, this was a phase where Congress uh, ruled both independently till 1964 and later 1990 in various ways in coalitional forms. The Shudra presence in national polity was slightly different. Though it was the Brahminist forces within the Congress and the Western educated and old feudal, uh, newly uh, emerging new rich around Congress created a culture of eliminating Shudra leaders and the Shudra leaders starting regional parties. Uh, it started apart from DMK with uh, Charan Singh's uh, party. Charan Singh was part of the Congress uh, earlier. So from there to the present regional parties, Congress was pushed to a situation of uh, either rule in coalition and don't rule at all. Uh, now the BJP came to power by using the same Shudra force again as the Muslims to at all. They just not only used Babri Masjid, they used cow ideology, they used uh, uh, beef issue, they used uh, uh, the, the Arab countries, cultural, this thing, Muslims marrying, and Christians also converting with so-called foreign money. So both Muslims and Christians uh, became a target. Uh, then we, if we look at seriously, from 1925 to till now, in writing the entire ideology of RSS and BJP, 
there is no single shudra thinker all of them were brahmins and uh, their leadership is in brahmins till narendra modi became prime minister the real national political leadership also in the hands of brahmins with banya capital support but after 19 2014 i found out that the shudras after they came to power were completely marginalized marginalized even central cabinets and there is no enough intellectual force also among them the bjp rss definitely had foreign educated local educated english educated and today those who are running ashoka university uh, so on and so forth are uh, the hindutva uh, are pro hindutva uh, kind of people congress has its own set of intellectuals left have their own set of intellectuals but all of them are advija uh, intellectuals there are hardly any shudras to uh, locate and um, For the first time in 1918, I wrote an article. Where are the Shudras now? Because they brought BJP to power. They are not seen in uh, Delhi. And uh, what happened, unfortunately, was in 1990 reservation. The top former feudal Shudras emerging. agri business shudras like marathas kamas uh, uh nadars in uh, uh, in 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 tamil nadu uh jats jats for for example the leading green revolutionary force in the country they all thought that they should not go downward by owning up the constitutional category of odc and take reservation they opted out because they thought they will become kshatriyas and rulers of the nation but what happened after the reservation implementation and rss conducted a systematic campaign against reservation but mainly through the dwija intellectuals banias were in the reservation but opposing reservation in practice so the shudra upper layer did not compete anywhere with the dwijas and got into universities got into uh, political sophisticated uh, what we call i tables or ambassadors and so on so i found in central universities in iits iims when i go and give talks there were no shudra professors live alone who be says they were dalits visible even across the you must have seen uh, the 50 dalit uh, uh activists intellectual list of uh, outlook if you take shudras that number cannot come out that is the situation so then i wrote this article where where are the shudras but if you carefully look at ambedkar's uh, book he was not talking about where are the shudras in 1946 because even then shudras were shudras only then that would have perhaps led to a massive debate in constituent assembly on shudras sardar patel was not willing to take up that issue because the fear of brahmins and banias kayastas katris they were all at once foreign educated by then there were no hardly any shudras in the constituent assembly who were england educated uh, and the top topmost among from our background is uh, ambedkar so sardar patel Uh, they used to mock him when he was speaking english when nehru's english was admired as equivalent to english british english 
Sardar Patel's English was mocked. Ambedkar matched Nehru in many ways, but there was no Shudra equivalent. So uh, RSS leadership came from English educated. Even uh, Hegdeva was a doctor uh, educated in uh, uh, Banaras in the university. So even later on, uh, Olwalkar also highly English educated, Sama Prasad Mukherjee, and Dindayal Upadhyaya, all of them were English educated. But the Shudras did not educate their people in English, including the princely state rulers did not send their children to English medium education. Therefore, there were no leaders. And the Brahmins were ruling princely states as prime ministers and head priests. That was a very prime position. So I thought we should really rake up the Shudra question and I wrote uh, that essay, which Caravan published, and it became uh, quite uh, visible and it hit the market. And even I, when I was, I was surprised when I met Pushparaj first, he read it and uh, he's a very young, uh, 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 you know, person in Samrudh Bharat leading it. He read that essay and realized the importance of it. So now we brought out this in order to create a binary uh, between all Shudras on one side, Dalits with them, rivals with them, and the Dvijas, uh, wherever they could be. And the debate has to really go to the logical end. If this does not happen, BJP can easily rule with the Sudra or power easily for 100 or 200 years, I don't know. Because for 350 years, the Brahmin spiritual system did not allow them to rebel. Yeah. History, no, hist no country's history provides you a population of this size, which remained slaves to the Brahmin spiritual and social control without involving in production. There is no country in the world, no religion. And this happened, they, they remain like that. Even today, while being in RSS also, they are not asking priesthood position. So then we thought, this Shudra question has to be put because as of now, Mandal Commission and uh, 1931 census put Shudras at 52%. And government is not bringing out the uh, census data afresh. Uh, even with this 52%, see the difference between 52%. Yes, there are thousands of castes in this from a, a Maratha or a Jat ready to a, a Dhobi or a barber or a pot maker a shun, uh, or a shepherd, there's variations. But yet this concept Shudra is their own. Earlier as slaves, as stupid people, their definition. But now we define that as people who are who represent production, uh, dignity of labor, and developmental national national ethic. This is Shudra. Productive, dignity of labor, and developmental of national ethic as equal people in future. And they will have to take the Dalits with them by abolishing untouchability with their new philosophical vision and take Adivasis with them. Once this lot comes together, and uh, this book consistently, uh, unlike other books, puts English as the central point to, to change and construct a philosophy 
of greater vision than the Sanskrit Persian that they ruled India earlier. And at once, the Shudras of India can become global intellectual force through the language power. Because we must understand in the world, English is the only language, not even Greek, Latin, Arabic, Pali, Sanskrit, which have which has examined the earth and the heaven in a very scientific manner, much more deeper than at any time by any other language. So this language is in our land now. We should own it. The Shudras are not owning it because Rajaram uh, Loyard told them don't own it. Uh, even in constant assembly, it was defeated to be uh, recognized as a national language. And now RSS is opposing all over India through new economic policies, but we put it and we have to take this into the 52%. Now, once the 52% oppose the Dvijas, wherever they are, they could be claiming secularism, liberalism, Marxism or whatever, then the RSS, uh, RSS system collapses. Other systems, the secular, the socialist, have to come into the fold of Shudras, come into the, uh, uh, come into the uh, uh, understanding of Shudra, productive knowledge, English becoming the national language, uh, equality, uh, social justice, not just for reservation or here, but the spiritual justice, spiritual equality. Okay, Hinduism is a religion, but every Shudra has, should have a right to become priest. Every Shudra has a right to become intellectual, philosopher in that. So these are the broad values, including this book lastly examines with all those things Authors are there. After me, uh, Ram Shepard will briefly speak about the methodology. There is last chapter on caste and political economy, which has literally shaken the entire economic theories that were so far written by Marxists and liberals and right-wing economists. So I'll stop here. Then uh, authors will briefly speak one by one and later on you can carry the discussion. Thank you. We can't hear you, Venkat. You are muted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Professor Raila, yeah. So uh, who do you want to, uh, you want to like call the names, uh, Professor yeah, Raila? Uh, now I'll, uh, I'll request Ram Shepard to- Ram Shepard, yeah. Uh, Ram Shepard is, uh, is, is author of a phenomenal chapter in this. So far, no popular uh, book uh, has, has uh, come out with that kind of a uh, thing called, uh, 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 I think he himself will do that. Uh, yeah. Ram Shepard is, uh, is actually came uh, into university uh, while completed his uh, graduation by being a, a sheep herder himself uh, from distance education. Wow. Then he, he did his MA by being a driver, truck driver. Mm -hmm. And then did come to university straight away into MPhil, sociology. Within 12 months, he finished his MPhil. Wow. And within uh, two and a half years, he completed his PhD. Wow. And became one of the one of the youngest lecturers again in Usmania. Mm. And he is now only two people have been selected by the Ambedkar International uh, Central Government Center for Ambedkar Scholarship for this year. 
Rom is one among them. Oh, is that overseas? Yes, yes. He is coming. He will be... Where he will be coming? He will be uh, uh, coming to uh, Dallas, uh, Texas, in one university. Oh, wonderful. And he has written a paper which has become internationally uh, acclaimed. It is in WHO uh, website also on how shepherds have first discovered head immunity by protecting sheep from smallpox. Oh, wow. Yeah, he wrote that and uh, it was first published by Chinese Journal of uh, Traditional Medicine. Mm -hmm. Then it, it went into uh, World Health Organization website. He will speak now briefly. Ram. Yeah, that, that's very inspiring, Ram Shepard Garu. So I heard about you, but I never had a chance to meet you in this one. Yeah. But uh, thank you for uh, joining us. Yeah, it's all yours. Please, you're unmuted. You can talk. Yeah, good evening, Manandan. In fact, I contributed one article for in this book uh, titled as Production and Protection as Shudra Spirituality. And the subtitle of the article is A New Discourse on Indus deities and Vedic gods. So, in fact, uh, in this article, I differentiated in between the concept of God and concept of deity. So, you take uh, the religions uh, which, which have evolved outside of India, uh, they follow the concept of God. But uh, if you take the Indian origin or Indian native religions, which evolved on the basis of historical materialism, uh, the concept of deities, uh, I am calling, deity is nothing but it is a historical fact which contributed immensely or which may be martyred in the struggles uh, of eman emancipation. So in that uh, lines, I took a different turn because uh, I, I have examined the methodologies of various uh, subaltern thinkers from day one onwards. For example, if you take uh, Charvakas and Lokais, Ajivakas, even Jains, Buddha literature, and uh, even Pule, Ambedkar, up to Ilya, I have gone through the methodological part uh, thoroughly. And in the modern writing, uh, we can uh, name uh, Pule, uh, Ambedkar, and Ilya which are very predominant. They, they repeatedly appear, appear in the subaltern framework. But I found a gap uh, in their methodology. For example, if you take Ambedkar, uh, Ambedkar uh, analyzed the Indian classical text. And because he, he was educated in you know, West uh, Columbia and uh, you know, uh, Oxford universities, naturally, most of the Western scholars, they used to follow, once they used to follow uh, the citation method, uh, where they used to take different books and they examine the reality and phenomena, thereby they quote whether which is appropriate or which is inappropriate. Like in simple sense, it is a textual analysis of uh, Indian classical text. That's what uh, we can see a gap in the Ambedkar writings. Ambedkar meticulously, you know, gone through each and every you know Indian Vedic, Vedic and classical text. But he did not, uh, you know, verify the reality with the field. The field uh, observations are not visible in the Ambedkar writings. Similarly, if you take uh, Ilyasar writings, uh, he wrote uh, in a different way. He took uh, experience uh, as a method of inquiry, the framework of experience he used. And whatever he wrote in the Why I Am Not Hindu or Post Hindu India, those are purely, that means merely empirical. And without citation, he wrote. Uh, Elaborately. So, and uh, the gap with the ILSR writing is that uh, he did not, you know, verify this uh, or cross examine this reality on for with the existing text. So, this I observed. Uh, that's what I, I, I feel that uh, whoever uh, takes the new attempt, uh, we have to follow both uh, from book to, you know, field and field to text to field and uh, field to text. We have to go thoroughly, that means uh, we have to examine in both ways. So then only we can, you know, establish a proper academic research. And I thought in that way, and more of I am atheist, because I don't know whether Ambedkar is atheist and Ilyasar is atheist or not. 
but i am much impressed with the ideas of atheism and uh, the brahmanic or the uh, you know uh, the hindutva ideology that apparently you know enslaves the masses by using the very concept of god in fact god is a, a, roughly in a scientific way it is a vague idea but the god is the centrality of their you know discourse but instead of using the concept of god i took a different shift uh, i am differentiating in between god and deity so according to my paper in that book god is the merely evolved on the basis of you know ontological and abstract discourse because discourse is the centrality for the idea of discourse is centrality uh, in the in the in shaping or in the disseminating the very idea of god but uh, whereas the native indian speak uh, native indian uh, shudras they have different kind of spiritual system from the indus valley civilization onwards so that's what uh, they followed uh, a unique method and whose gods generally they are great scientists and uh, you know martyrs sometimes you know they are philosophers too and that's what you know even i wrote in the one article just before i as i said about the herd immunity so this uh, herd immunity concept came from the shepherds uh, particularly from the indigenous and uh, indus valley civilization culture so you take uh, their deity you know in general uh, even for uh, in the south india particularly in the south india even in north india also the sheetal mata or pochamma or nukalamma so they they name in a different uh, with a different name but she is the one uh, the person who invented uh, you know vaccine for the violet diseases so since she was the inventor of the diseases uh, sorry she was the inventor of uh, you know vi- uh, vaccine therefore in the honor of uh, her credential the uh, indigenous people they used to worship similarly you take the vitoba of uh, maharashtra or samaka sarlak of uh, telangana or you know tadi tapping community god katamaya and even the weaver community god uh, deity called markandeya so markandeya was the first person who invented the weaving technology he invented you know co- cotton from the cloth similarly washermen they worship uh, uh, a deity called uh, madelu madelu he extracted you know soap from the soil so these are the indigenous cultures which are still prevalent if you go and uh, carefully observe the indian village system so therefore i thought uh, looking indian history in a different uh, and uh, scientific way uh, which is uh, very much appropriate and uh, which reserve, uh, really gives a new pride to the uh, native indians who are generally called as shudras and why uh, many people are you know they have a objection to use uh, shudra word because some some of them they call it is a demeaning word and created by the you know brahmins but how you claim this demeaning mm. word instead of using the bhojan tar but sometimes if we use bhojan so in the bhojan it is the term called plurality is so a brahman tomorrow they may come we are part in, uh, part and parcel of bhojan category they may claim because even bhojan means it is the plethora of plurality therefore a brahman a priest can be a part of in that category i feel but however uh, to to uh, draw a clear cut mark in between dvijas and non dvijas and the shudra word is very much appropriate uh, to debate in terms of political aspects and technological aspect cultural aspect in all regards you take any regard any aspect and uh, we can you know uh, align with the brahmanic culture by using this particular term but however this is a small effort uh, because it is a collection of articles and and around 10 authors we have contributed in a different way in, with a different perspective of understanding so there is a larger consensus but uh, i request the upcoming scholars and you know intellectuals you take the essence of this particular book because which has given a new direction for the country to claim the indigenous cultures and indigenous technologies indigenous pride and indigenous indian uh, indian nature original indigenous uh, indian philosophy so with the spirit uh, if the upcoming scholars they may go uh, uh, and conduct the uh, appropriate research definitely Uh, we we can combat with the brahmanic system 
and uh, we may visualize the anegalitarian society that was existing in the uh, you know indus valley civilization and with this i stop here i will discuss whenever the opportunity comes to me and i will keep uh, touch with you you all people thank you very much uh, for giving this opportunity yeah yeah thank you ram garu yeah so professor ayle garu you want to say yeah, something uh, i uh, kartik uh, you come and speak a few words kartik is a co editor of the book yeah yeah from uh, tamil nadu from a community called gounders Karthik uh, was actually a software engineer mm -hmm. with a uh, uh, mtech degree first he worked for some time as software engineering engineer within india and got bored because his philosophical reading was very high by then then went to jnu did his ma in political science did his mphil there now he is doing phd uh, in jnu is uh, is very young and i discovered him when uh, he worked on our first uh, volume a vision for a nation on my essay he edited it and he did lot of good work and he did lot of work on that book so uh, then i thought he should work on this book and become co editor with me and now he is co editor Karthik, you speak uh, briefly of what you think of the book, how they should read it. Yeah, Karthik, uh, just uh, yeah, I will. I have to unmute actually. Uh, uh, Sanjay ji or somebody can unmute. I am trying to do it, but it's not working. After Karthik, Bindu, you should be ready. Yeah. No, he he is unmuted now. So, um, you know, uh, what I would say, uh, yeah, Karthik, you are unmuted now. Please go ahead. Can you please uh, take five minutes, uh, yeah, in the interest of time, so that uh, we can, you know, come back. Maybe I think there will be a more discussion. Probably we guys can come back again. But uh, go ahead, Karthik. You're all set. Hello, everyone. Thank you for Boston Study Group for inviting us to discuss about this volume. I first of all, uh, you know, uh, thank. Uh, Professor Kancha also to give us this opportunity to discuss this. So first of all, the uh, the object of the volume is to put the Sudra question back into the discussion of when we are discussing anti-caste uh, politics. Caste, the question of caste is not only uh, affecting a certain 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 caste, but rather it affects a very large number of population that includes backward caste. and even the shudras which is uh, visible in so many layers but uh, have been systematically invisibilized by so many factors so i see this volume uh, as is a combined effect, effort of so many shudra scholars which brings out that uh, invisibilization and shows how they were uh, invisibilized and held back in different uh, sectors so we see in many sectors so they are well educated uh, many of the uh, shudra people are not able to shine as intellectuals because they are still under the ideological guidance of uh, dwijas uh, either it's in the secular or in the religious domain so this volume is coming as a kind of conversation with the people uh, uh, who are young people who are in the universities or in the outside who is who wanted to make a change make a conversation with the existing paradigm so even uh, in my experience the intermediate caste and their uh, energies are spent on many activities which are uh, in, in the car leaders of these communities across india uh, spending in bolstering their caste pride rather than seeing their place in the whole national a uh, place like how many professors are there how many supreme court ad uh, uh, advocates are there or justices are there or how many actors are there so these kinds of questions are uh, seldom raised but they are all uh, are very busy in claiming their regional pride so this kind of uh, kind, uh, kind of uh, problem exists 
where there is a delusional mindset in terms of uh, claiming pride in the one hand but on the other hand the national economy and the politics is controlled by banya and uh, uh, brahmins so this contrary this volume uh, seeks to resolve this conflict of perception of uh, who uh, with whom lies the real resources and with whom lies the real power and it it covers both secular and uh, uh, religious domain and so this sort of intervention especially is needed because the leadership uh, of this even the movements which is started with a promising uh, 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 kind of uh, guidance like uh, dravidian movement or from sp or in various others and the non brahmin movement uh, as not able to deliver their promise of uh, challenging the whole uh, brahmanical hegemony as well as uh, providing a uh, egalitarian uh, world for the uh, every every community so this volume uh, uh, along with professor kanchalya we have planned it to start a discussion on uh, how we can start an uh, uh, conversation on what should be our future agenda as to how to uh, take forward this this volume actually uh, also a result of the the failure of the shudra communities to take the ideological guidance of uh, you know, foolies and uh, ambedkar and periyar so we uh, as a com- many communities across india has failed to take their guidance in terms of uh, uh, taking forward uh, the interest of the nation and as well as uh, keeping a democratic uh, uh, ethos so this volume is provides as a reminder call and uh, trying to consolidate and have a conversation with all those who want to uh, have a democratic and egalitarian world. thank you thank you kartik so uh, did you say uh, professor ali uh, him bindu right next okay bindu are you there bindu i think bindu not there i think okay if bindu is not there arvind arvind was there so arvind i think we have to no no actually we have to unmute uh, okay so can you look at the name month whether bindu bindu is there yes yeah we have hello, to unmute yeah actually yeah, that's a problem yeah hello am i audible Yeah, Arvind. Okay, you go, Arvind first. Then we'll bring uh, uh, Pindu next. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, Arvind okay. is a uh, is a Yadav from Bihar. Uh, where from the exactly the region where from B P Mandal came is a first generation uh, graduate, post graduate, and PhD from J N U from political science. is right now teaching in uh, jamia milia uh, delhi and uh, he is one of the upcoming very powerful uh, uh, nationalism theory writers and uh, he is is very popular in fighting the reservation battles on tv channels and regularly writes to several uh, web papers newspapers and he is the author of the first article the shudras and uh, the, the the nation today uh, arvin you speak now okay uh, thank you very much uh, i must uh, uh, begin by thanking professor elaya and uh, boston uh, study group i am fortunate to be virtually in boston because uh, you know i have been to united states of america uh, to research about the black panthers uh, well uh, i did history for my graduation so fairly i had done uh, had a knowledge of colonial history because indian history honors paper ends with 1947 when i came to jnu i got to know about something called post colonial studies 
and of course partha chatterji was one of the theorists is popularly known is written extensively it was around the same time professor elias book had already come why i am not a hindu you know in library canteen i got this book i read through but i never could connect that you know i am a sudra and this is a sudra critic of the hindutva being grounded in a left politics student politics in jnu i was fairly acquainted with the th- certain theories and you know the theoreticians in 2001 uh, gopal guru who till then was not teaching in jnu it, it was around the same time that he came to teach in jnu earlier he definitely studied at jnu but he mostly uh, taught in pune and other places in maharashtra he wrote a fascinating article called how egalitarian is social science in india and you know he uh, uh, makes a very pertinent point he writes that indian social science in the indian social sciences there is a pernicious divide between the theoretical brahmins and empirical sudras now this is uh, you know it's it's provocative provocative in a very positive sense you know till then i did not understand you know that i am a sudra and am i doing any theoretical work and then after long years because uh, it was by then dalit studies had already taken its shape and having gone to american studies to do my mphil i i was uh, you know looking for a topic for the marginalized and it was an american lady uh, now an indian american lady gail omwit she suggested me that why don't you work on the black panthers and dalit panthers how the black panthers inspired the dalit panthers so that's my phd and then it i had this opportunity to go to the us uh, 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 you know different universities including columbia stanford uc berkeley all the campuses ucla all the campuses where black panthers uh, you know were active uh, that's what my phd after uh, that it was around the same time why i was finishing my phd uh, professor elaya came up with post hindu india uh, and i did a, a you know a review f- uh, for this book in the mainstream uh, uh, since uh, it is around the same time and it is a coincidence that then i got situated into the center for the study of social exclusion and inclusive policy and it is around the same time that you know uh, this this whole sudra obc uh, because there was a conference in hyderabad there was a big project with professor uh, so i'm i'm cert- in certain way connected to andhra also so therefore i call a for andhra b for bihar so uh, there i uh, you know learned a lot from professor simadri professor uh, kanchailaya in in hyderabad workshop were fascinating in terms of like you know uh, you know giving me this confidence that the sudras can also do theoretical work and it is enough of empirical work and as as ram seffert correctly says that this is a time that the sudra scholars the young sudra scholars must learn the the uh, you know language of uh, you know doing theory and the rigor of doing field work so that like you know we can come up we can bridge that empiricism with uh you know making theory uh to 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 uh, you know bring the back story back from where i began that it is high time that the sudras must start doing theory and it it is in in one sense uh you know this this article of mine called the nation and its sudras uh you know is is a humble attempt to to start doing a theory thank you so much Okay, Venkat. Venkat. I'm sorry, I'm muted actually. Yeah, yeah, we have unmuted Bindu ji. Can you open Bindu's... Uh... Yeah, I did, I, we did already. So Bindu ji, can you speak please? Bindu, are you there? Yeah, we opened BD, right? Uh, Hemant Sanjay, can you help? I did it. Let me check. Oh, she's yeah, she's unmuted. B D, right? Yeah, I did that. B D, yeah, right? Yeah, B D, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. go ahead, Bindu ji. Can you speak, please? 
the uh, unmuted she is unmuted she always yeah she is unmuted yeah. yeah mindu are you there some problem okay uh if she is not there so maybe... she is there but i think she has a no no again muted wait 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 i don't know why uh, is uh, going back and forth see again it's muted can you try that uh, sanjay and uh... no she she is a co-host to impact uh, so oh she yeah. is supposed she can, to unmute, she can right? unmute yeah. uh, she can can unmute herself you should be able to unmute uh, bindu ji what is her name b b d right bindu yeah. bindu her name is bindu no no it is coming as a b d there correct b d uh, is the id b d is the id yeah okay hmm. okay something is wrong there okay uh, who do you want next then um, manikant are you there manikant uh, let me I, they cannot speak yeah, Mani, manikant is there manikant is there so manikant right is there yeah yeah manikant hello yeah manikant yeah, yeah. you are unmuted now yeah uh, manikant is uh, author of that the shudra consciousness uh he is from telangana from munnur kappu background mm. and uh, he did his ma he is very young he is just uh, 26 27 uh he did his ma from uh, hyderabad university at a time when uh, rohit vemla uh, mm. died and he was part of that whole movement then he went to jnu uh, for his mphil but for two to and a half years uh, he hardly went to his semesters but fought all jnu movements then uh, there they did not allow him to submit his dissertation he came back to hyderabad university now he he finished his mphil uh, is uh, going to work on his phd right now is teaching in sardar patel college now he is one of the uh, very well read young student scholars i have so far known so uh, he did that work and he has written already three four very good articles uh, manikant uh, briefly speak uh, what you think is the book will do yeah uh, uh, jai uh, jai phule jai bhim everyone so uh, am i audible sir yes yes you are very much yeah good morning yeah. sir yeah yeah so uh, firstly i would like to extend my uh, revolutionary greetings to the uh, uh, boston study group for uh, organizing this uh, lecture uh, and also to other uh, co-authors and everyone who is here uh, uh, so i think uh, i'll i'll just uh, i mean be brief maybe 2 3 minutes i i won't take more than that because sir has to a uh, sort of uh, he has to speak uh, 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 more upon it and other uh, uh, author co-authors so i think <clears throat> this book uh, uh, when, when we think that what it it's uh, sort of uh, relevance in in stopping the hindutva uh, as a primary concern for us i think there are two things that uh, we need to focus as a uh as an activist or a, a, as a uh, member who who where we sort of engage with our own community people on the ground and also as a research scholar or as an academician how do we do it so firstly when as we know that hindutva uh, in its entire body politics it, it counters all the regional and the local cultural framework right so when hindutva does this uh we are doing it in a different way i mean we are sort of bringing the regional local cultures which are known to us and we sort of countering the hindutva's hindutva's claim uh let it be the cultural claim let it be any economical claim now when we are doing this uh region uh region versus pitted against the nation we are also sort of imagining the A, a, an alternative nation so here there are two nations the the, the nation which we speak which which uh, mahatma jyotiba phule uh, in his conception of bali rajya which ma, ma, uh, phule has talked and against the brahmanical uh, notion of the nation and now this nation versus nation is coming through a region 
it is coming through a local culture this is one aspect second as we all know during 1994 uh uh when samajwadi party and bahujan samaj party was sort of coming together when they are forming this organic solidarity coming to power uh, uh mv kamat uh, writing in uh, organizer 1994 uh, in august or uh, may may or august uh he sort of warned the uh, all the hindu nationalists against the uh, possible fallout of a hindu uh, possible fallout of a shudra revolution and now how should we consider this i mean they are sort of scared of shudra revolution they are scared that the dalits and the shudras i mean which we call them as like obcs they are coming together and which they see as a threat uh, for the larger monolithic uh, uh, hindu hindutva brahmanical uh, political framework and secondly uh, what we have to do is that we have to very well systematically analyze the mandal mandir and the market phenomenon now this three ms which, which has completely taken our lives uh, out of the way out of the circle so uh, if when we try to analyze this man, uh, mandal mandir market from from a from a shudra point uh, perspective also i think then we will be getting more insights on to how uh, we we can sort of uh, stop or we can Yeah, yeah. We can, sir. No, are no, you saying I, something? Yeah, yeah. They, they will do, and you also unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, I think yeah. we have to mute the. Uh, I'll yeah, mute so, you for a minute. Yeah, go ahead, Manikan. So, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, this one systematically we need to focus uh, in in evaluating the mandal mandir and the market phenomenon. So in doing all this, we have to sort of, uh, I mean, uh, still we are sort of facing. we are uh, encountering this question uh, which which uh, phule in his introduction to gulamgiri uh, he dealt with so i read this line uh, uh, which phule says that when, when someone asks this question phule uh, says this so when the number of the shudras and ati shudras is almost 10 times more than that of the brahmin and the baniyas then how could the brahmins have destroyed them so this is the question still in this 21st century we are Uh, sort of uh, uh, grappling with and i think phule in his introduction uh, he he very i mean in a simple way which is a more deeply philosophical and also a political in a way he says that one shrewd man can dominate the minds of 10 ignorant people through persuasion secondly had this 10 ignorant people been of one and the same opinion they would not have allowed one person to dominate them so this is what phule uh in in response he he sort of uh, he responds to that question i think that's what we in this book uh, sort of did this and also uh, in my chapter called shudra consciousness uh, uh, in a in a very limited possible way uh, i have done that and, and and in my coming article on the farmer protest and the shudra rise of shudra new consciousness i discuss more on this a uh, few few narratives few essentialities for the shudra consciousness that can possibly sort of uh, stop and uh, counter the hindutva in every possible words and last one one just a quick point that uh, we have to sort of remember that we need to whatever the claims or whatever the narratives whatever the language that our our people on the ground speak i think that would give more insights uh, in order to sort of understand and Uh, fight the the cultural entrenchment of hindutva in in this century and i think uh, the the best answer would be to i mean to to fight this hindutva uh, sort of uh, juggernaut i think the uh, the best way is uh, that uh, a possible shudra revolution should be there and it has to come in order to fight the hindutva in all possible means thank you one and all uh, jai phule jai bhim Yeah, thank you, Manikanta. That was. Uh, Venkat Bindu is uh, unmuted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is, I think, unmuted. Can you speak, Bindu ji? Yeah, Bindu. Yeah, now she changed her name. I think. Uh, can you see? Yeah, yeah. Now you can. Am speak. I audible? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Uh, Bindu, I have a very bad data. Yeah. No, no, we can hear you well. So go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. Bindu, just a minute. Uh, let me say a few words. Yeah. Vinka, do you remember in the last uh, New York Times 
uh, New York conference. Yeah. Uh, where we all met in the in that uh, university. New school. New school. Yeah. Sindhu was there. I met oh, her. Oh, okay, okay. Good, good. He is a young lawyer, practiced for some time in Bangalore. Mm-hmm. He comes from um, a Wakliga part, a community and uh, did her PhD from uh, New York from some university. So he mm-hmm. came back to Karnataka now and mm-hmm. she is the author of uh, uh, one fine chapter uh, which actually the publishers were also very happy with this. Socio-cultural identity formation among Shudras. Uh, now Bindu will speak. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Bindu. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor Kancha and Boston Study Group for this opportunity. Just a correction, I haven't done my PhD. I've only done my master's degree in law. Uh, okay. That correction. Um, um, I, uh, the reason I wrote this essay is very personal, but is also political in nature because I was able to sense my own marginalization, which is sort of intellectual marginalization in spaces that are dominated by upper caste academics. Uh, I was able to experience that as a first generation English speaker. When I started mingling in these spaces, I realized what is my position as in, in comparison to upper caste academics in these spaces or upper caste activists. Um, so that's what prompted me to sort of write about my own identity or the Shudra community's identities in Karnataka. So my essay is basically about um, the dominant caste communities in Karnataka and where they stand today in Karnataka's um, intellectual spaces or cultural sphere. So that was more of the idea behind uh, writing this essay. And Professor Kancha asked me to specifically talk about the status of Shudra women, which is a small section in my essay. Prachi Patel, who's also another author of the book, uh, one of the chapters of the book has written about uh, status of Shudra women in detail. So I think she would have been in a better position to talk about the status of women, but I will briefly talk about what is there in my uh, essay and why is it relevant. Um, Like other authors have already talked about how there is just not enough literature or data to sort of back up our own experiences of marginalization of being Shudras in, in the modern India. I was also faced with the same problem when I started writing about women. Uh, there's just not enough information because these narratives are not being recorded. You just don't have enough Shudra women writing about other Shudra women. You have upper caste women, you have also Dalit scholars who have done that for decades together, but you just don't have um, um, any Shudra intellectuals doing that for, for, for Shudra women. So that's what sort of prompted me uh, to add that section in my chapter. Um, and And what I realized was despite the deregulation of the economy in the 90s, um, what was promised was sort of the upliftment of women, including Shudra women. What has happened is uh, the workforce of Shudra women has in fact gone down. Shudra women, despite being educated, are not actually gainfully employed because a lot of their time is taken up by domestic work inside their own houses. And, and, And the other reason is also that the Shudra men's income has also increased uh, comparatively. So that is also sort of stopping uh, women from seeking gainful employment outside. Um, And that passes from one generation to another, which leads to greater marginalization of women in professional spaces. So young Shudra women like me, when we go out to these spaces, we don't have... uh, uh, we don't have any support structures or, or what we call social capital or social relationships, which would help us navigate these spaces successfully. And we have to put in 10 times more the effort in order to be able to access these spaces even or to even break in. Um, so that's sort of what 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 my um, essay talks about in detail. And, and my hope is that uh, my very genuine hope is that it, this doesn't become sort of an oppression Olympics because that's not the idea behind this. It shouldn't become an oppression Olympics because this is this is not a competition. But I hope there is a genuine reflection by 
uh, shudra scholars shudra intellectuals and shudras everywhere uh, to see what's happening and why is it relevant that we need to record our experiences we need to have our own narratives to counter the hindutva hegemony uh, in this country um so um, i hope this book book goes a long way and we have more people, um talking about it and and there's some kind of change that we can see in the near future okay thank you bindu ji um professor ile garu anybody else bindu uh, can you see uh, is there a grant g r a n t on the screen Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the first review author from. Yeah, the... Grant is there. Yeah, uh, Grant makes for land. Yeah, you unmute him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, Sanjay ji. I'm. Yeah, he's, uh, he's can you please, here. Grant, uh, unmute yourself? Yeah, now? I did. He's I did. Okay. I did. Grant, can you speak? Uh, you wrote the first uh, major review, which is all over, including on Amazon. Uh, could you briefly speak about the book? <laughs> um uh sure uh first am i am i audible can you hear me yes yeah, you're yeah. audible yeah okay great uh so uh, uh yes i can i can briefly uh share about the book i guess um so i uh let's see so i'm an american i i came to india about 10 years ago and i've i've been here um since then I've uh, I've been working with um Sunil Sardar who is the author of of one of the the essays in the book uh for this entire time and I came uh because I read Mahatma Phule's uh, work uh slavery um and I was I was uh just uh, captivated by it and and so uh pretty quickly you know I came to learn about uh Ambedkar and uh, Kabir and and Ravi Das and just all all those types of people so um I would not have known who any of those were uh, uh otherwise but uh you know I knew about them so when I came to India when I started learning about India I had the that that vision already from the very beginning of um you know knowing what the caste system was knowing who shudras were uh knowing what the the problems were uh in the indian culture specifically uh as it relates to the to the religion of of hinduism um the the sanskrit uh, scriptures the brahminical scriptures brahmanism things like that um so that's that's what i've had a uh an eye on as long as i've been in india so it took a little while for me to finally understand that uh although this stuff was uh, obvious to me uh many people in india just did not understand it they did not see it they did not know who the shudras were and they didn't know why they should care um obviously the, the in the political arena it's it's important to understand who they are because they've become a a, a major vote bank and uh, many of the the uh authors of the articles in the book uh can comment on the political situation better than I can but um uh one of the things that that has really encouraged me about this book in particular is that it has uh not been uh scared to to call on the uh religious or the the spiritual uh nature of the battle in India today hindutva is of course uh based on on a particular uh interpretation of hinduism and it has a it has a religious uh flavor ideology that that we have to contend with and when we look at the people who we respect people like phule uh, and ambedkar um people like uh, maybe um uh, basavana or uh, uh maybe all the way back to you know buddha uh, we see that they didn't just criticize uh what they didn't like about uh, hinduism or, or whatever you want to call it back then uh, they didn't just criticize it and say um you know well we don't like it they formulated alternatives you right they on becker did his conversion phule did the truth seekers movement um you you got the uh, lingayats and in kerala you've got uh, um kabir panthis and and ravidas and just you, they formulated alternatives 
that uh, removed the Brahmin from his preeminent position, that removed uh, Sanskrit mantras, they removed the Vedas from their position of prominence. Um, they they centered around uh, some sort of God that was uh, readily available to all who seek him through bhakti or through truth or, or whatever. Um, and they, they, they weren't afraid to to uh, take steps that would include even uh, conversion if necessary. And uh, this book uh, points us towards that, uh, uh, that step. As we were discussing at the very beginning, um, the opposition in India doesn't really have a sound uh, plan, a platform that they are uh, uh, pressing for. They, they obviously have an anti-BJP platform that they stand on. But what do they stand for? Well, you know, we're not quite sure. Um, this book, uh, I believe, paves paves the way to allow them to understand that, that there needs to be a a, a religious uh, agenda put put up front to say that um, you know the the Hindutva is is centered around the elements of Brahmanism that exist in India, and we need to we need to address those those elements. So. Um, yeah, uh, that's that's briefly my, I guess what I have to share uh, about the book. Um, I've read I've read the whole thing uh, a couple of times, but I helped mainly uh, Sunil Sardar with his with his essay, and so I'm mo- most familiar with his. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, that's all I had to say. Okay, thank you, Grant. Um, Professor Riley, anybody else? Any author uh, still? You ask uh, Adapa to. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, take questions or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll take. Uh, Professor Adapa Satyanarayana, you want to? Yeah, he, um, he is available. Let me, uh, can you, uh, Adapa yeah, Satyanarayana? I, I asked him to unmute. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So you're, now yep. you can speak. Yeah, just yeah. a brief introduction. Uh, professor Adapa Satyanarayana is a, a retired uh, professor from history department from Usmania University. And he has, um, uh, you know, wonderful scholar has written, um, you know, uh, and came in with so many international conferences once. He was there in, uh, what do you call the South Asian Social Sciences, sir? That yes. con- South uh, Asian, no, no, World Social Sciences Conference. Yes. And, you know, uh, he was the only one Indian uh, from um, entire, you know, it's, it's a very big conference at Harvard. Of the 12 participants, yeah. Yeah, only yeah. So it was uh, is one of the uh, leading scholar in his space, and uh, so I think uh, I heard you speak in the last meeting when Gopani Chandra yeah conducted. So I think you have some good perspective on this book. So briefly, if you can speak, yeah. Professor Adam Satyanayana. Yeah, uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Venkat, for uh, this opportunity. Uh, you know, since Kanchaile uh, and myself for contemporaries in Usmania. Uh, we both share uh, certain uh, ideological and uh, conceptual uh, framework. And uh, when Ilaya uh, when Ilaya took this initiative to bring this book out, the Sutras Vision for a New Path, uh, I was quite um, you know thrilled in a sense that perhaps historically speaking, uh, the category of Sudra was consciously used by Mahatma Jyoti Bapule for the first time. The first and the foremost Sudra intellectual, Mahatma Jyoti Bapule, in fact, counterposed the Sudra with the Dvija. And he, by creating the binary uh, called the Shedji Bharji, and Sudra Sudra. Pule has in fact elaborated this historical category called the Sudras. And therefore I wanted to trace the genealogy of this category that Kanchaileya and his group used. It occurs to me that this book's title has so much to share with Mahatma, of course, they dedicated this book, you know, to the police, you know, uh, in this, uh, you know, dedication, you know, the great, uh, they said, they dedicated this book to the great police, Mahatma Jyoti Rao and Savitri. 
So therefore, when Kancha conceptualized this category, the historical category, the sudras, I think he has very rightly contextualized it. You know, as the Boston group has very rightly put it, the Hindutva Jagarnat, you know, the as, as per under the understanding of Kancha, the Hindutva represented the Brahmin, the, the Brahmin Baniya combination, just as Pule called it Sedji Bharji. And Kancha now wanted to contrapose that Brahmin Baniya duo with the Sutra. Of course, he consciously left out the Sutra, though in his earlier writings he talked about the Bhajan. But now the Yadi Sutra has transformed itself into Dalit. And today we all know the category of Dalit has been very well articulated, comprehended, conceptualized, theorized, and you know, it has come to stay. But the Sutra, the category, historical category called Sutra, has not yet arrived. So the book is the foremost attempt to provide the historical consciousness to the Sudra. And in this sense, I place Kancha and his group in the, you know, in the serial number in number three. First, in my understanding, it is Mahatma Jodhiba Pule. The second, who articulated the Sutra consciousness and the Sutra hood was uh, Raman or Lohia, who was the guru of the Indian socialists. You know, Raman Lohia was very categorical when he talked about the necessity to bring in the OBCs into the for forefront in political terms. In fact, you know, when he wrote this essay in 1959, entitled Towards the Destruction of Caste and Classes, Lohia observed, I quote, hundreds of other castes are there who, when taken separately, are not decisive for election purposes, but taken together constitute two-thirds of India's population. For parliament elections, such backward caste should get our attention and leaders should be created from their ranks whose voice and action may infuse and inspire satisfaction, self-respect, and fearless, fearlessness among them. I think Lohia talked about the political assertion of the Sudra to dethrone the upper caste, Western-educated, wealthy, Nehruvian elite. And today, Kancha, with this book, the Sudras, is now providing a cultural, an ideological, and a philosophical justification. In that sense, this book you know, needs to be contextualized in the contemporary situation as the postal group has very rightly characterized the Hindutva Jagarnet. You know, to counter this Hindutva Jagarnet, I think, of course, Kancha, in his own you know, autobiographical you know, study, why I'm not a Hindu, in fact, counterposed the ideological, the cultural, you know, uh, a counter ideology, you know, counter culture. And today we need to, taking cue, you know, from Jyotiba Pule, uh, Lohia, Ramana Lohia, I think now we need to sort of uh, uh, construct the counter culture. And with this book, you know, it is, of course, though it is not a kind of a, you know, Bible or a kind of a, you know, panacea to all the issues concerned with the sudras, but certainly it is a great pointer, you know, which it, it creates so many leads. It gives so much, uh, what you call, uh, clues, you know, for the younger generation. And uh, as Ramon Rohia said, that there is a great need to create an army of sudra intellectuals. You know, as somebody said, the sudra theoreticians have to come out and to conceptualize. And Kancha has provided the ideological, philosophical, and cultural justification for this category called the sudras when he said that the sudras now, I mean, as it was uh, as different from the kind of a context that uh, Mahatma Pule used it, the context in which uh, Kancha postulated it in the 21st century, the Sudra is a category of productive castes and communities in which agricultural, artisanal you know, communities are together, including the so-called upper Sudras. So in this sense, I think uh, to counter the Hindutva ideology uh, and culture, I think uh, the Sudra 
uh, category needs to be you know contextualized you know systematized and uh, you know articulated and in that sense uh, the great contribution of this book uh, is quite uh, is quite uh, memorable and uh, I'm, i'm i'm glad uh, maroj you know you your group has taken this initiative and i'm sure you know this will go in a long way you know to sort of create uh, the necessary ideological uh, and philosophical basis uh, for rethinking india in terms of the sudra articulation so in that sense this book is a great contribution uh, just as uh, gulam gri and just as ambedkar's uh, you know classical work uh, who are the sudras uh, and and lohias you know uh, the whole uh, you know set of you know uh, 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 arguments and then you know the consolidation of all those uh, you know uh, genealogies is now reflected very much uh, by these young scholars uh, by the young sutra intellectuals in this book uh, while i congratulate the young scholars uh, i do hope because myself and the kancha now we are in the 70s you know we are a generation you know who have imbibed you know both the the the, the marxist uh, and the socialist and uh, the ambedkarite uh, you know genealogy and uh, you know the, uh, we are glad that the younger generation is coming forward and whatever little that we have done uh, in our own way uh, would certainly be carried forward uh, by the young sutra intellectuals and i hope i am optimistic that it will be done and i, I congratulate uh, uh, ilia and his group you know for this uh, great intellectual exercise thank you uh, venkat uh, for giving me this opportunity yeah thank you professor adappa um professor ailegar so anybody else remaining from authors i think that's all we have right no yeah uh, that's uh, now you can uh, yeah 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 so um thank you all i think uh, it was uh, uh, i think uh, uh, initially when we planned we didn't expect but this has become a uh, one of the high um, i think uh, um uh, you know intellectual power that gathered uh, today uh, i mean amazing uh, all of you i think uh, in your own field um, you know the way i think uh, you've been contributing and uh, it, it was a, a very very powerful um, messages and uh, uh, thinking and path breaking uh, writing so uh, thank you all so i think i'll i'll go to questions i think uh, first uh, you know this professor jv are you there can you unmute him uh, he has been uh, wanting yeah. to ask a question is unmuted right and, uh, hello professor yeah i tried to unmute uh, yeah so he can unmute thank you all so i think i'll i'll go to questions uh, i think just uh, briefly uh, introduce uh, don't take uh, please uh, briefly introduce yourself and you can ask your question uh, please yeah 120 seconds yeah please no. yeah please uh, at the outset i want to thank the Hello, host and speaker yeah, yeah second i want to thank oh. professor elaya and also the whole team yeah and to conclude i want to tell you she as a space scientist and being a, a dalit background person and a diploma in buddhism recently mm-hmm. i am having few serious objections to this uh, uh, impressions given to me in this uh, two hours meeting please yeah that is the indigenous knowledge uh, proposal was good uh, there is lot of things are happening in the climate change disaster management and in the infodemic i'm not referring to pandemic the dalit community all over the world including india they are living through this impasse and gauntlets and our intellectuals are no where no where near this community enabling to take care of their security it's a very serious lapse but thank thanking all the serious work being on i am seeing them going back 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 not front mm. so this is what i wanted to say thank you very much yeah professor ailegar you want to respond to that there is uh, i don't think there is Uh, much to respond yes i think the sudras and dalits even from among adivasis once uh, after all all signs of future would uh, depend root itself on its past a uh, thing i was reading um, the the famous book uh uh sapiens by harari you know uh 
all most advanced uh, uh, you know intelligence design that is going to come uh, is based on the past. So the Shudras and Dalits Adivasis have just started few years back. And that is what my understanding is. Once they all learn English, and India as a nation speaks one language apart from their regional languages at local level, uh, these questions that you are now talking about, the future will be handled by them very seriously at a high plane also. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I have one um, question um, to Ailea and the team. You know, the uh, I grappled with uh, this category called OBC, right? Um, and sometimes in Telugu, you say, you know, BC Rajadikaram and all that. And, uh, you know, I, given this 50 plus percentage of people, the spectrum of socioeconomic disparity and, you know, if you call gradation in Ambedkar terms, is so huge. You know, even this OBC category, like uh, uh, some of the Gaudas, Yadavs, you know, in, in our thing to Jats and, you know, Marathas to, you know, uh, there are people in the lower, uh, you know, socioeconomic strata where, you know, they're even poorer than Dalits, you know, the Namoyats and all that, the, some, you know, the language we used uh, uh, most backward communities and things like that. So it was uh, it was an administrative uh, constitutional term, but uh, was very difficult to find this uh, bondage or uh, you know trying to bring them together, you know, and um, especially I uh, you know when you talk about uh, you know this large section of shudras and with um, you know uh, Dalits. The only person I, I uh, actually give some credit and uh, have a success to that he you know, achieved, I mean, like he was able to bring them together is uh, Kanchi Ram in, in the modern times, okay? He was able to knit a, a, a very broad coalition of, you know, all of them in some way were oppressed, okay? Um, Dalits and, you know, uh, some of the, you know, uh, Shudra communities to minorities and, you know, uh, he was able to do that and achieve some success, but that uh, experiment also seems to have failed now. I mean, we are, we are not going forward. It's it's declining. So it, when it comes to Shutra that I'm taking, so my challenge is, you know, even the so-called OBCs, you know, uh, in the modern, you know, constitutional language, they came up, right? You know, like most of my community, we are like first generation fathers who post-independent education. Then the second generation, we became engineers. We crossed the, you know, getting, uh, you know, came to US or have, having a better lives and all that. So, but these communities also are being so, uh, you know, um, rapidly Sanskritized they shed all their roots and they act like Brahmins. I mean, they, we've seen this all around in US. I mean, most, you know, OBCs. And forget about all these, especially the upper Shudra dominant caste, you know, they even act like a Brahmins, actually. In a, in a Telugu states, I mean, we all know the Brahmins have, don't have a lot of, uh, you know, economic power, political power. Of course, their intellectual is still there, but uh, very marginalized. So, Given this type of uh, you know disparities and um, huge differences, this Shudra term again uh, trying to bring it to you know life of, uh, the, and uh, show them the place that they are in. They, there is this superiority inside them that thinks they are somebody you know like Neokshatriyas, these Shudras, or other people think oh they they they're Hindus, Brahmanized. So. How do you think this type of a debate will be embraced by some of the dominant shudras, some of the literate who have, you know, crossed that chasm of, you know, um, the economic, social comfort? So that's that's a big question uh, bothering me since I've been, you know, read this book or anything. So I lay yes, sir, you you I know you. Yeah, uh, you are right. Yeah, it's a uh, very. Uh, huge uh, social mass right. and numbers and 
also the number of cars, the number of occupations, still even in this 21st century, and uh, the kind of spiritual consciousness, uh, which uh, bound them to the Brahmin feet, uh, particularly Shudras. Now, uh, how do they transform? Is there a future? Now, there is a fundamental difference between a political question and social, spiritual, economic, and political question. For example, Kanshiram organized politically. He did not uh, uh, really create a spiritual alternative, uh, social alternative, did not evolve an economic agenda like, let us say, Marxism evolved. So when they came to power also, they followed the same Congress economic model. And then the religion, they allowed the people to operate within the Hindu or Buddhist, uh, some kind of a thing. But uh, Pule, why Pule is so uh, powerful today, and Ambedkar is much more powerful, even though they did not come to power, are they? Because they worked out agendas for socio-spiritual, political, economic transformation. Now that is where uh, I've been trying to address religion repeatedly. People need religion. And uh, when, when Brahmins are telling about religion, they follow them. But we have never asked them to, uh, you become a priest by yourself. You become a philosopher by yourself. Why are you surrendering to a Brahmin? Who is your enemy actually? Who hates you? Who doesn't sit with you? Who doesn't eat food with you? So this needs to be done first theoretically which is not done, and then practically. So it takes quite a bit of time to, to do this intellectually and uh, seep that into universities, colleges, now school education and so on. So it, the project is much bigger than a political power project. It doesn't succeed uh, in politics also if you don't have a base. That's where America said social revolution should precede political revolution. But my feeling is spiritual revolution has to precede social and political revolution. Got you. Spiritual revolution is the key, in my sense. Yeah. Mm. No, that, that's, uh, that's correct, actually. What you said, uh, you know, Kanshiram only focused on politics and some you know uh, equations didn't uh, work out then it, it fell through actually so uh, you're absolutely right social cultural revolution or spiritual re revolution will transform it in a in a lasting way or in a permanent way right okay so thank you and uh, let's go to some questions here um the audience were asking um one one question the uh, what is his name uh um See, the I think uh, there one person like Praveen Balishan asking, you know, there are successful shudras in business, politics, and cinema. If you prepare a 50 shudras list, do you think Outlook or similar important magazine will publish it? Uh, you want to answer that? Uh, well, I mean, like, uh, I, I do not know whether, you know, we need Outlook or anybody, but uh, I have my own opinion. To just respond to that. Outlook knows some database. Yeah. Uh, I think this this is uh, you know uh, it's more a symbolic, but uh, uh, I mean it's it's outlook has uh, I think uh, they they published this uh, recently right uh, with Ambedkar, uh, uh, what do you call a special edition? They have published this fifty. I mean that's something you know uh, if somebody wants to do it, I I do not know, like Professor Ilya type of persons probably wouldn't be interested in doing such thing, but you, you 
who who uh, professor you want to respond or somebody else will respond yeah, karthik may say something on that yeah karthik go ahead is karthik there hello uh Okay. Otherwise, otherwise pass it on. You know, sir. So. Yeah, it's okay. So the uh, yeah, I think he is un is not is muted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we have all seen the outlook uh, list of uh, uh, like eminent uh, Dalit personalities. So that itself is uh, it's a very interesting process because a lot of people were. the mainstream media were never acknowledging uh, uh, the dalit as a category because it uh, always uh, perforce like that uh, the oppression that is happening for that uh, social community so it's always being relegated or uh, side step but uh, recently now uh, the media and uh, the other power structures are increasingly recognizing the uh, dalit identity as uh, 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 dalit identity and even some people in the uh, interestingly some people in the list have uh, opinion that uh, they are not happy with that they are uh, categorized as dalit because a lot of them uh, identify as ambedkarites and uh, and so a lot of problems with the list itself but interesting it's an interesting question because uh, uh, like when professor kancha and me like we are going on about this project it was certainly a difficult process to get enough people to uh, you know respond to write on this question uh, so definitely there is a problem in terms of when it comes to eminent personalities or uh, world class intellectuals from uh, shudra community which constitute the 10% of the whole world population you know that is a matter of concern and like i hinted before there is a dearth of uh, 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 personalities and also who are self consciously identifying who are aware of their position on their own history so uh, but uh, it would be possible to compile such a list uh, i no doubt a uh, 50 person won't be a problem but again like uh, this many people realize this is a project which uh, so on the works we are we are uh, trying to uh, make uh, a lot of people across india to realize uh, what kind of disabilities what kind of debilitating uh, uh, history uh, the past they have and what kind of, the present place they are having it's a uh, product of the oppression or the exclusion they have faced but the uh, that is the work of uh, say fully or uh, periyar uh, which again it's a unfortunate thing that we are now uh, forgetting that and uh, now the people who are enjoying the fruits of those labor they're not able to recognize that and able to recognize their own history so because of that because of the lack of that awareness and the lack of the numbers in unity in claiming this identity so i think it's not possible to uh, you know uh, persuade a, a, a kind of a uh magazine to publish this but uh, again like penguin did this this was the first of this effect where penguin as uh, uh able to publish this so i would say like uh, what kancha uh, said last time like uh, the proletariat is uh, in the germany where is uh, um subalterns is in the for the italy so here it's the Uh, shudras and the dalits are the categories that is that is how uh, uh, we should discuss things but uh, yeah that is that's a long way to go thank okay you. thank you i have one question to sir kancha um you know uh, it is madhu chandra asking um, you wrote where are shudras i am wondering where are northeasterns in the race for race of shudras quest uh, northeasterns okay Uh, so do you want to respond to that well see northeasterns for a long time were in the tribal uh, locations uh, so you know uh, now shudra dalit adivasi so if we put all these three categories together of which we don't want to jumble up and define everybody as shudra because uh, adivasis have 
their own location still uh, and the northeast has its own place both within the adivasi as well as certain sections english educated and uh, very organized as well so uh, they are part of the larger arappan shudras uh, indigenous uh, what they call molwasis or adivasis but for for ideological purpose uh, they are still in the adivasi category but otherwise broadly they are historically shudras so we need to look at that Okay, thank you. I think uh, Subhash Gedam uh, wants to ask a question. Can you unmute uh, Subhash Gedam? Yeah, yeah. Subhash ji, JB, yes. we can do it. Yeah. Uh, hello, Professor Kancha. Uh, so this is Subhash JB. We met a couple of times in Boston, long time yeah. ago. Yeah, 2007 when we yeah. first not the uh, yeah the. the first uh, mit conference yeah. was given was there yeah. i remember yeah. once i saw you i remember you yeah, yeah. Uh, how are you doing long time you know He's struggling in the covid <laughs> yeah hyderabad is very bad yeah, yeah. okay the um, there are a couple of things i wanted to say in support of what you had just said and that is um, one we need a common language and uh, you know for a long time many people were thinking that hindi will become a national language but we are far from that so in the meantime we have to focus on english we have to make sure that our new generation uh, learns english and becomes fluent in that and i think you had been pushing that idea for quite some time and uh, you brought it up even today Uh, so i'm f- fully in support of that the second thing that you said is that there needs to be a religious or a spiritual movement before any kind of economic or political or social revolution can take place and that is something which baba saheb ambedkar had also emphasized quite a good number of times in his speeches and his writings and he gives the example of how india could be- become unified under the mauryan empire because buddhism had come up um, ha- had developed and that helped chandragupta maurya and later on emperor ashoka to build a politically strong nation later on he also talks about how after islam came into existence in arabia uh, you, you had a very big uh, powerful muslim empire the ottoman empire and in like manner he has given several examples uh, like uh, when um, the sikhism came into existence there was a political movement in the northwest part of india so all these uh, strong uh, political and social movements that became very strong they were preceded by religious and spiritual movements and that is what baba saheb ambedkar was uh, struggling to explain it to our people he himself embraced buddhism hoping that it will strengthen our, um, not only our spiritual and moral values but also so it will uh, make us into a strong society uh, that would be capable of being politically active so that's all i wanted to say mm-hmm. nothing uh, uh, contrary mm-hmm. to what you said but just in support of what you said no you are right uh, subhash ji um, you know there is a recent uh, theory hmm. and it was elaborated by harari in this famous book hmm. it is available in us all over and it is the best seller of uh, almost a millennium now what harari says is the old definition of religion is changing he says liberalism is like a religion in fact harari says liberalism has become the biggest religion of the world now that those who believe in liberalism and want to practice it he also says that marxism is a religion is a strong belief uh but uh, there is a fundamental difference between liberalism as a religion marxism as a religion then the god centered religion you know here in india we are stuck with this whole hinduism which is organized the 
divided people into various categories in the recent past and again once again in, into a hindu hegemony and the shudras have uh, unfortunately unconsciously walked into the trap so what we are planning in this volume is while ambedkar is driving dalits into buddhism shudras are not going there while ambedkar wanted to drive them into buddhism more of them are going into krishna shudras are not going there. so to create a shudra internal rebellion against hinduism to capture hinduism also in a different way capture priesthood tirupati temple ask for ram temple priesthood and philosophical positions then that will create a crisis in vijas and they will be overthrown if they are overthrown even the idea of hinduism will radically shift we don't know how it shifts and where but the ambition has to be for example ram shapad in his essay said krishna is different totally from ram krishna is a shapad krishna is philosopher but yadav and other shudras have not become priests of the temple krishna uh, they have not done that so there are new questions coming from the young scholars let us see where it goes and what kind of changes it does bring and english once it becomes a national language one book is written in english in india if 10000 copies are sold it is considered to be best selling book by penguin books but if all of our people understand read english 10000 is very small number 10 lakhs will be sold within a month that is what we should achieve so we have to define india english as indian language therefore we started celebrating indian english day on every 5th october i think you all should do that and uh, uh, bring consciousness of the language thank you thank you professor okay. yeah thank you uh, professor kanja this one question from youtube um, uh, how would you locate shudra ontology around the two historical categories of dalit and bahujan which are born out of the experience of avarna struggles it's a, it's a very i think a relevant question can you, ask, uh, can you unmute ram and uh, ram shepard to answer that yeah ram is uh, ram uh, Hemant, can you unmute Ram yeah, Shepard? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I read that uh, question in the YouTube and even in the comment section. Yeah, Ram. Uh, in fact, uh, the Shudra and the Dalit are identities, but now the because of the postmodernism, when mm-hmm. the advent of postmodernism came in in terms of all aspects, ideologies have gone. Mm-hmm. So now people, you know, politics are running with the poli- uh, you know identities. so therefore to create a you know paradigm shift among the obcs and uh, unreserved uh, shudras we are we are coming with uh, this shudra concept in fact in a larger way uh, dalits and bahujans and uh, shudras and uh, adivasis all indigenous people who are connected who are rooted their ancestors or their culture in the indus valley civilization they they they, they should consider they are one Okay, so in this way, I think we that is end OBC server. So uh, adding to that, uh, Venkat. Yeah. We are consciously trying to say that we are all inheritors of Arab. Right. Not Vedism. And uh, Ambedkar could not say this. because at that time the arapan civilization was not fully studied mm-hmm. so now we know the arapan civilization arappa was a human way in whose name a city was built mm-hmm. how do you know number of appas ramappa temple correct yeah bangarappa yellappa mallappa birappa correct so we are saying it is not you know the 
this uh, Ramayan Mahabharat uh, text, uh, Narakasura, Barakasura, all this, all this set aside. Uh, like uh, like Christians and Muslims, mm. they they call themselves uh, Abrahamic people. Mm -hmm. We should call ourselves Arapan people. All right, got it. Our source. Once you go to that source, then Hindutva is finished. Their Vedic uh, strength is finished. And uh, Vedic civilization is war civilization. Harappan civilization is production and construction civilization. So you, you, you counterpart these two in ancient, they will be finished. So we are going beyond Ambedkar in that, beyond Buddha. Got it, got it. Right. Okay, um, I don't know, that's Praveen Balesian, uh, Balesain, yeah. He yeah, asked, you know, can we demand, uh, mention Shudra category in census to classify OBCs or backward classes? Just a simple uh, question, yes. yeah. No, census will be done. Only as other backward class because of the constitutional position. Right, right. Once one census comes out with the OBC category, because the 1931 census uh, looked at only Shudras, there was no OBC category at that time. Correct. Uh, so they called them uh, depressed classes in that census. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Hutton Commission which defined as depressed class. But now if the OBC census comes out, all Reddys, Kamas, Kapus, Marathas will demand for including in OBC. Mm -hmm. Then the reservation question will come into Supreme Court. 50% will be fought all over the country. Court will have to definitely go above that. So let us let us see what happens once census is done. Okay. Thank you. See, this is, I don't know whether Professor Arvind Kumar is here, but uh, this is, I think you addressed a little bit uh, in your talk. Um, what is your take on Sri Krishna? In North India, every Yadav think they are lineage of Sri Krishna. Is uh, Professor Arvind Kumar is there. Can you unmute? Um, uh, Hemant? Yeah, what is the name? Arvind, Arvind Kumar. Okay. Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. Arvind, you can unmute yourself now. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes. Uh, uh, well, I, I do come from Bihar and, uh, you know, uh, the point that I was raising uh, that when uh, Professor Elia wrote Post Hindu India, uh, uh, while I was reviewing that book, I uh, made uh, an interesting uh, critique, uh, which Professor Elia, uh, you know, appreciated also. That particularly in North India, UP, and Bihar, uh, Yadavas and Gwalas or Gaderias, whatever you may call, uh, you know, because even within Yadavas, you have Gotras like. Uh, uh, Majrot and Krishna. So those who trace their lineage with Krishna, they definitely, uh, you know, uh, assert themselves as the descendants of Krishna. And in in terms of, say, polemics, Lalu Prasad definitely, uh, you know, more than Mulayam Singh uh, asserted, uh, you know, uh, this this point, uh, which which uh, Ram Seffert's essay also, you know, talks about. Uh, but I, uh, you know, uh, as someone uh, contributed to this volume and as I said, like, you know, we are the first generation trying to theorize, uh, you know, the Sudra question. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we uh, uh, this whole uh, uh, Yadava or, you know, even the Koiris and Kurmis fall trap into that whole theoretical frame of what what Srinivas defined as Sanskritization. Mm. And as Professor Elia keeps on repeating that they all thought that we will become Kshatriyas or rather new Kshatriyas and will reclaim our power position. Mm. They, however, 
terms of building that intellectual or is sort of alternative they definitely grabbed the political power which of course uh, you know uh, uh, christopher jefferle uh, explained as uh, india's silent revolution but i i do not see it uh, as quite a revolution because only few people became they got empowered and it this was you know dubbed as a revolution so if we uh, uh, you know uh, look at the ground then we feel that even during lalu prasad's regime or mulayan singh's regime lot of yadavas did not benefit so so there uh, i i do not uh, quite endorse uh, uh, that that janeu andolan which they started or the triveni sangam they started you know history has its own phases and they had its own relevance in terms of like you know asserting their self confidence there i agree but if they thought that that will bring in their uh, intellectual or spiritual emancipation there i think uh, it it is quite a failure so i do not quite endorse to the idea of uh, aping or or sort of you know uh, uh, endorsing that we are descendants of uh, krishna because then we fall into the trap of rama versus krishna so therefore i again would uh, you know uh, go with uh, professor ilaya and would say that okay karnataka at least had a leader who congress uh, you know made minister uh, was uh, samappa so yeah, <laughs> you know yedurappa or samadarappa uh, i think i think uh, you know i i do not personally as a contributor to this volume i do not buy this argument of uh, you know claiming our krishna descendant okay thank you um there is one uh, question i know uh, this is professor kanchal is very dear to you is uh, saying uh, one name I'll, i'll say i lost a little bit now um you know is there any uh, framework uh, to develop uh, this shudra intellectuals um, uh, in english writing skills and you know uh, uh, basically uh, let me read i'm missing that question so he, is, he was asking um how you uh, you know uh, to develop the shudra writers intellectuals uh, in english i know that topic is very dear to you so you want to comment on that uh, so i need venkat kartik has a plan for that yeah you want to talk kartik so, then yeah school of training of english writers yeah uh, can you ask him to comment yeah yeah so uh, kartik uh, uh himant can you unmute kartik please yeah i did yeah kartik uh, yeah you can unmute kartik yeah yeah go uh, ahead so please. professor kancha is very uh, uh, categorical in uh, uh, making people learn english and to make them involved in the discourse even he is so fond of it that he announces his own uh, birthday like october 5 is the indian english day and uh, he said like uh, uh, for our purposes for the purposes of uh, our politics it's not necessary to you know to speak uh, a language like american or to uh, or a british person but it's already how we communicate like that the english has already shaped in our language and so we have to master it to the level that we can understand and interact with the world so he is very passionate about that he is always telling us and even uh, every person he interacts to take up the language of english and not to fall in the trap of a, uh, a regional sentimentalism towards languages where they are uh, in contrast their own sense will be studying abroad or in other places so uh regarding this we have been discussing a lot like we thought of like organizing workshops uh in future if, uh, if arranging uh, so it takes certain logistical and financial resources but if we get enough we could uh, uh, have a short start with a short workshop for say two months uh training uh, people from uh, you know shudras dalits and adivasi communities to come and you know uh Uh, write on things that to express themselves like uh, because the the biggest problem we face uh, here especially with the shudras like i referred to before is that uh, 
the distance between the uh, thought and uh, uh, and the word is uh, to write in the paper is very huge in these tasks because uh, say we see a lot of brilliant Dalit writers who are able to express uh, themselves, they accept their express their politics and uh, they are uh, writing uh, guided by their ideological perspective. They're able to express their politics and uh, their situation. But uh, it is, it comes to a uh, 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 Shudra caste across India, uh, uh, whether it can be a uh, uh, OBC caste or a non-OBC, like which you call the creamy layer uh, Shudras. Like, uh, so uh, not uh, any of them are like very literally uh, able to master the language and uh, able to articulate the situation in English, which becomes a huge uh, 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 problem in representing the reality to the world or at the national level. So, so this thought, uh, so, uh, but it's not a totally uh, lost case because a lot of them are able to articulate their uh, thoughts in a uh, regional languages like say uh, in Telugu, Tamil, or uh, Hindi, they are able to articulate it very perfectly. They have the uh, uh, sound mind and they uh, have a proper ideological framework. But uh, again, when it comes to writing, there is a huge uh, 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 gap in terms of uh, uh, able to commit that thought into paper. So it, it, it of course, it is the uh, effect of uh, you know centuries of exclusion from the literary traditions and we know by whom uh, the brahmanical ideology and the people and until recently 200 years like uh, uh, there is no sort of until fully came into the picture and the british colonialism has uh, opened uh, this writing we are unable to access that so uh, so professor kancha is very categorical in uh, uh, using uh, english because it's close to the power center of the world to use this language as uh, one of the ways in accessing uh, the power which we are denied always, unable to articulate ourselves in a powerful way. Uh, because uh, if we see uh, uh, Dravidian politics in Tamil Nadu has produced a lot of literature. Periyar has written a lot, but it's always uh, restricted to the Tamil region uh, because of uh, its language. And uh, even Baba Sahib's writing, we know uh, it is quite uh, translated, cut, caught on because of the uh, reason that he got uh, written in English. We all know that if you only have written in Marathi, uh, uh, we might not uh, uh, even have access to Baba Sahib's work. So for that reason, like we are, uh, uh, we are constantly uh, in discussion and talking about like how to enable this, how to. Uh, uh, spread this uh, idea of making English as a, you know, communicable language, as a, a tool of uh, 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 communicating our politics and and also in terms of giving shape to this idea in an institutional form. Yeah. Thank you, Karthik. Thank you. That's uh, actually, there's a lot of effort needed. I know uh, Professor Alia keeps, you know, our uh, people, um, you know, people like us, you know, just go into this mechanical, uh, you know, careers, English and technology. And uh, uh, we need to find a lot of hardness, some of the new uh, crop of bright minds uh, towards social sciences and writing, because that is what changes uh, the society. And that is what, and I think uh, uh, you guys are on the right thinking and we hope uh, we create a lot more people like you, you know, it's not an easy thing, but your efforts are lauded in that. Uh, uh, Ilesar always speaks. He wants to create intellectuals, writers, writers, and that too in English. And I think that uh, probably start uh, making, you know, gathering more momentum and uh, create a critical mass so that uh, we will one day uh, produce a lot of uh, thought leaders. Okay, uh, I think we are we are running almost two and a half hours, um, so we will be wrapping up. One last mm -hmm. question, uh, Professor Ailegaru. Uh, uh, what is your next book? Uh, can you share anything that you, what kind of uh, things you are working on right now? Somebody was asking that question. No, my next book depends on what kind of uh, management of COVID is done by Delhi. Yeah, yeah, you should write. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see, uh, that all depends on our survival now. 
India is 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 going to be a terrible situation. Right. And um, once we get out of COVID, because they they made Indian consciousness that all diseases can be cured by cow urine. Mm -hmm. Now this government is a cow urine government, and uh, it is it is uh, in a very. India is in a very bad situation. Each one of us, we don't know what will happen to or tomorrow. Yeah. So we'll discuss our books after the COVID is gone. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Sanjay, you want to say, or uh, Heyman, do you want to say any concluding no, so comments? Uh, 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 Venkat, I saw some Aship Akram raise hands in between. So if he has any questions, we can take that question if you... Yeah, want. maybe one last question. Yeah, let's uh, take from Ashif. Uh, uh, Heyman, yeah, can you unmute him? Hello. Uh, yeah. Hello. Yeah. You can speak. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm audible. Okay. Fine. So, uh, uh, my uh, uh, rather comment is many people uh, during this pandemic is not understanding how this pandemic is actually is even worse for Dalits. Many people are thinking that this is a very good equalizer in the sense that all poor people are being treated similarly, and even the <laughs> rich are not spared. So they do, they are not understanding how Dalits are doubly marginalized. So yeah, yeah, yeah. can you just elaborate how how it's uh, how Dalits are being further marginalized in this pandemic, uh, even in case of a cremation or uh, burying dead or things like that. Yeah. Yeah, Professor. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know, Professor Ayla, you want to respond to that? Nothing, nothing to comment on that. You take the other question and close it, you know, it's, uh, it's almost... Yeah, Ajib, you know, but just a simple comment, right? Any big disaster happens, you know, the, the people at the bottom are the biggest sufferers. I mean, we have seen even the initial phase of COVID, uh, the kind of people were had to walk thousands of hundreds of miles and, you know, don't have food. I mean, it's, it's a pretty disastrous for uh, lower strata of people. I think Professor J.V., yeah. One last question. You want to comment a question? Please go ahead. Yeah. You you need to unmute yourself. Uh, Hamid, can you unmute Professor JV? Yeah. Is uh, uh, my wishes that Professor Ilaya lives longer? Number one. Yeah. yeah we all wish that. Yeah. <laughs> he writes a ten or hundred more books like. Twenty-two <laughs> years is the life expectancy in India. Okay. Hundred years is a possibility. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is all our New intellectual Dalits should think of one thing. Yeah. UN and WHO, if you can see the webinars, you'll find all over the world, the most vulnerable people are living through. It is these, for example, in Karnataka, 15,400 crores has been the last because of floods and famines in the last year. Mm -hmm. What we should do as intellectuals, Dalits, we should look at the current problem and come out with books. Vision, because I like it, Professor Ilaya, when he said spiritual, social, political, and yeah. economical. That model is the right thing, and I yeah. want to thank him and salute him. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Professor JV, for uh, that uh, good comments. And uh, so, uh, you know, I want to conclude here. So, I want to really thank uh, uh, Professor Ilaya and the entire team uh, of this uh, Shudra book. I think it's a very, very uh, wonderful contribution and uh, bringing up at, uh, at the right time, at the right discussion, um, you know, really there's right now, there's no answer to kind of a Hindutva, the way they are organized, the way they're marching forward. And I think uh, this um, is a very thought provoking and a new hope and, uh, uh, you know, a new way of thinking to counter that. And uh, I really uh, thank all of your efforts and also thank uh, patiently um, answering and uh, talking to us uh, on behalf of BSG. And uh, with that, uh, Sanjayji? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, yeah. I wanted to let everyone know that uh, we have recently published our first magazine, uh -huh. uh, The Awakening, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Boston Study Group uh, for the, all the U.S. diaspora. 
the new magazine of the Ambit Cry people from uh, America and abroad. So um, please uh, go through that. I think Heman posted uh, the link for that, or you can go to the Boston Study Group, and there you should be able to find the link for this uh, magazine. So this is our first first. That is one thing, and second thing. Uh, from today's speakers, the when I, I was listening to all these uh, new generation of the speakers, I'm really amazed with their knowledge and their dedications as well as the commitment to the cause. So really, uh, I mean, and I should be thankful to Boston Study Group for bringing uh, Professor Kanchailaya and he in turn bringing all these people to this forum. But I thought that each one deserves to be a, a so separate spe speaking assignment and we'll see that uh, yeah. they are being invited on boston study group thank you lectures yeah i will uh, collect uh, uh, emails from uh, our contact uh, information from professor kancha Ilaya, and then we will contact because we do this very regularly and uh, we'll put up a deeper into each topic so we can do that so with that uh, you know jai beam jai phule jai savitri bai and uh, thank you all yes, thank yeah you. Jai. Jai Bhim. Jai Bhim. Yeah. Bye-bye.